Hi, my name is Mark Belaish. I'm back here with the Music Expo. It's uh, great to uh, see and connect with so many people on this platform. Uh, we've had, really had some amazing musicians uh, performing over the last little while. It's been uh, very cool to meet a whole bunch and uh, very cool also to introduce my next guest, Michael X. Krusty. Oh. Michael, thanks for uh, thanks for being here. So uh, for those that, uh, that don't know Michael, Michael's a freelance photographer and videographer specializing in concerts, music videos, and brand promotion. And we're going to talk about who you've worked with because I looked at the list and I'm like, wow, as a music fan, I'm like, wow, this is this guy like is connected, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. So so let's talk about, you know, some of the artists and maybe you can talk about some of the work that you've done with them. You've worked with Moby, um, um, Tim from Rise Against, Danko Jones, uh, Sum 41, Goldfinger, a lot more. So so how do you how do you connect with them? Uh, you know, who do you like to work with? Why? Um, you know, what kind of stuff have you done? It's, it started off with uh, with doing concerts first in like uh, uh, I think I started doing concerts in 2018. Uh, I would go out to uh, clubs every night and just take photos. And uh, and eventually it got me to uh, working with a company called Canadian Beats, uh, who is a Canadian company. Uh, they're like a, a webzine, I guess you would call them, a magazine webzine. Um, and uh, I did a whole, I was, I was just networking. It was basically you just, you keep going to all the shows and you keep uh, working hard and uh, you, you meet people. And then uh, next thing you know, you're at the, the ACC or the Scotia Bank, and you're you're you're, you're taking photos of Tool, which is uh, to me is insane. So uh, a lot of uh, a lot of it is networking and just being in the scene for so long. I, I've I've been in the music scene for a long time. I was I'm a, a lifelong musician, so that helps as well. What do you play? Uh, it, <laughs> uh let's see. I started. I started with piano and then uh, uh, saxophone and trumpet uh, at a very early age, and then uh, I, I found uh, a drum set. Uh, my friend had a, a drum set, and I was just like in love with it. So I started playing drums, and then uh, I wanted a drum set, but my parents were like, "That's too loud and too noisy." So they got me a guitar. Uh, we're talking early '90s. Uh, I got a guitar. Uh, so I would say my two main instruments are guitar and drums, but uh, I worked at a music store for 10 years and I've basically like, whenever no one was in the store, I would pick up an instrument and learn it. So I could play a lot of stuff. Yeah. So you're, so you're the guy like at the concerts that, that uh, uh, guys like me who go to a lot of concerts who would go, oh man, I wish I had that guy's job. Like you get right into the pit and you yes. take pictures of, yeah. Uh, That's, yeah. That is a... Uh, 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 that is something I miss, I think, the most uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, the feeling you get when you're you have the the, the pass on and your the concert is on, is about to start. All the lights are out and you're in front of the stage, in between the barrier, and there's just thousands of people behind you. And you have your camera and the the music comes on and the band is about to walk on. And that feeling I get when I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna get anything good but I'm going to do my best. And that's the best feeling. And I always look back and I, I know that there's people like, Oh, I wish I was that guy. <laughs> that's the guy. Well, you're yeah. the guy. <laughs> yeah. I'm the guy. I'm one of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> you get the black t-shirt on and, uh, you know, yeah. got plenty. Right? Yeah, yeah. Very cool. All the black, yeah, for sure. And, and any, um, kind of interesting shots. Like, did, did you get, do you, do you set it up with the musician? Like, Hey, we're going to do this shot at this particular time or whatever happens. Oh, happens. No. Uh, like so, like for for bigger shows where it's like Live Nations, uh, like show with the Danforth or uh, uh, Rebel ACC. I keep saying ACC, Scotia Bank, uh, Rogers Center, all those places. You you don't even you don't even meet unless you know the 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 band. You don't you don't meet them be beforehand. You're just you're going in blind. You're just hoping that you're gonna get the shot. You know, like you get the first three songs to take as many photos as you can, no flash. And there's some time, some days where like, I'll do, you know, three bands that play in a night, I'll go home and I'll have 2000 photos to sort through. Wow. I'm just like, click, 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 click. Wow. Wow. And, and for those people who aren't from the Toronto area, Scotiabank Arena or Air Canada Center, as it was formerly known as, is, is in Toronto. It's our, mm -hmm. uh, it's our, um, where the Toronto Maple Leafs play. Yeah. Uh, the Toronto Raptors play and and uh, and there's so many concerts in normal pre-pandemic times, right? Yeah. So uh, so you take two thousand pictures uh, of a show. 
yeah some there's days where i'll like uh, like a band like three bands i'll have like uh it, it, it i average about 500 uh per band basically or r- roughly and it's like you doodle that down to about the best 20 wow so and, i have i have i have like hard drives full of photos people have never seen <laughs> wow and so what happens to those pictures like do, do they get uh, do you send them to the band like they're, they're used for media promo like yeah. what kind of for the person that doesn't know like me like you know what yeah so what's the sequence what happens they end up on a hard drive uh, yeah well uh, it depends on uh it depends i guess uh why i'm there if, if the band hired me or like the management hired me or the record label hired me I edit the photos and I send them to them. Uh, if it's for uh, Canadian Beats, who I work for, or uh, or uh, Heavy Press, which is another a webzine, I send it to them and then they post it on their websites. Or if it's just for myself, I'll just uh, you know, <laughs> I'll just have them. I, I I'll post like one or two of them and then I'll just keep them for uh, you know you never know like a pandemic all of a sudden you have no more live photos. I have like 40,000 photos I can just sort through and take a photo uh, and, and post it online. Wow. And then yeah. can you turn them into posters and, and like, yeah, uh, yes, really? I, uh, uh, there's uh, tons of, yeah, tons of times where uh, I get asked for prints, whatever. And yeah, uh, the biggest one I've, I've, I can't, uh, I think the biggest one is like poster size, which is I think 36 by 40 or something. Just a massive photo. And it looks great too, yeah, because I'm always using, I'm trying to use the best quality photo I can make for the, the band or whatever. Right. I got yeah. I got I to connect to the man. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to have uh, uh, a peek at that and then maybe get some some figure, uh, some pictures from you and put them up on yeah. the wall or something. Yeah. That'd be cool. You know, that'd be very cool. Um, and so, and, and saying that, like how, um so how can you help uh mus- musicians so say say somebody a musician's watching um how, what, what what kind of work can you do for them like what kind of uh help uh could you do what you know at pre-pandemic or post-pandemic uh, uh definitely uh it's good uh, for young aspiring bands the best thing you can do for yourself right now is have a lot of content and uh, and not just uh, like a lot of content of of just anything you have it should be uh great photos great videos great graphics and kind of uh like it you know go with the same colors for all your photos and, and kind of like all that has to be perfect uh, uh the way i would help is uh, i do a photography i do videography i do social media as well uh marketing so uh you know i would uh meet up with the band or the artist take some photos like talk to them about what they want what they and then if they have a song incorporate the music video and the photos so they all look similar and it doesn't it doesn't come out of left field if you're posting a photo uh and uh you can go from there that's basically uh you, you need to have a lot of content especially in this day of age there's no you're not playing co- uh, shows so you can't go to a show and post videos from a show so you need to have uh you know strong uh video and uh audio recordings as well for sure Gotcha, gotcha. So in, in uh, 2019, you won uh, a Mississauga Music Award for your video for Lala's son's song, Mufasa. Yeah. Uh, yes. Talk about that a little bit. Talk about the video and how that, what was. Uh, that was a, a, a fun and grueling video to make. Um, we shot that in Streetsville, Ontario, uh, which is in Mississauga. It's a town in Mississauga. It's uh, where I live for probably a decade or so. Um, we shot it over three days, uh, over a winter. It was, it, it's weird. If you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to notice if you watch the video, but we shot, uh, the scenes, uh, basically, I don't know if you watch the video or not, but, uh, the, the basic video is, uh, the bass player is tied up and he's being beaten and he has some information that the guy wants from him. Uh, the drummer is, uh, in, in police protection. And then the singer basically saves them all from the bad that's the best way i can describe it and i filmed all three band members separately within a span of like three months it's it's really crazy i did like a shot in november a shot in january and we put it all together and it and it uh it just worked perfectly i i and then uh i was a little shocked when we won but thank you yeah and uh that was actually my third uh uh mississauga music award so I have three in three years with, uh, right. with that. 
pretty cool. And, and you're nominated for another one, which I'll be presenting as well on uh, yep. Saturday, November 7th. You're up for uh, best online content. Yes. Uh, so um, why don't you talk about that as well? About uh, well, what- I, I guess people are really enjoying my uh, my online content. Uh, I'm uh, I'm very stoked. I mean, uh, I'm up against uh, a lot of great uh, competitors. Uh, Matt Zaddy's uh, killing it. Uh, he's uh, I've known Matt Zaddy for uh, 15 years. We used to be in metal bands together when we were in our 20s. Uh, and we used to tour together, which is crazy. Uh, uh, I did uh, identity, identity crisis. I, I always call him Paul. Uh, he's uh, he's doing lots of great stuff too. And then uh, I'm not really sure about the uh, so Rickard uh, and Tom is the. Uh, Rick yes. Ferdinand Tom, yes. Uh, I'm not really familiar with the, the show that they have put together, but uh, I do know Rick Ferdinand. He's in the Headstones, which is a great rock band from Toronto, and he's in a Metallica tribute band as well. That uh, I, And I love Metallica. I don't know if you can see. I have a Metallica tattoo that you can't see. Uh, uh, yeah, so I've been uh, I've been doing – I've been working extra hard on my online content this year just because of – uh, everything that's going on, I've really, really focused on that, and uh, it started. I think it started with uh, a couple of covers I was doing with some friends, uh, and I was like, "Hey, let's do a cover," and uh, I got them to make some music videos and record their parts at home, and they sent it to me, and then it kind of just exploded into this thing that it is now with Mikey and his uke. Uh, Mikey and his uke is a, a series that I'm doing with Mikey Hodden and a couple other people. Uh, working behind the scenes, and uh, we've been posting videos. I want to say once a week for since maybe May, uh, when we've done tons of covers, mostly punk covers. Uh, some songs I'm sure you're familiar with, and some songs you probably have never heard before. Mark, uh, would you, is that fair to say? Are you punk? Are you a punk rocker at all? Or I, you might be surprised. I might, I might look like an old guy, but uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm I'm into all kinds of music. So hit yeah. me with it. <laughs> great, great. Uh, it started. I want to say it started with a song called "Bro Him" uh, by a band called uh, Pennywise. It came, the song came out in uh, the early '90s, and we got. I think we had 40 people in the music video. Uh, Noodles from the Offspring uh, was in it, which was just a huge, a huge thing for me. Uh, we reached out to him and say, "Hey, hey, Noodles, do you want to do you want to be on the song?" And he, and he basically, like most of the musicians now. They basically said, uh, "I got nothing else to do. Let's do it." And they they want to be doing they want to be doing music as much as they can possibly do music. And and uh, like uh, I think a lot of people, it's uh, you just have to adapt, right? right. Yeah, like kind of like what you're doing here. You're, you've totally adapted, and it's great. So uh, it went from there to uh, we did uh, we did a song with Moby, which was pretty cool. We did uh, an old. Uh, Black Flag song called Rise Above, which I thought was, uh, was uh, when we released it, I thought it was a, a great time to release it just because of everything that was going on with uh, in the media and in, in the, the States and all that stuff. And uh, we had the singer from Rise Against as well on it, and which is a huge, a huge, again, deal for me personally, just because I've seen... The, some of the people that I'm working with now that like, and now it's like, I get, I, they reach out to me like, Hey, let's do a video. And I'm just like, you're coming to me. <laughs> this is amazing. Like That's cool. I, I, I saw, you know, I, I watched rise against with the Foo Fighters when I was like 21, 22, just thinking like, these guys are amazing. Uh, so it's, it's crazy to be working with all these different characters. Danko Jones from, uh, I think he's from Scarborough, Ontario, I want to say. He's a great character as well. And he is just uh, uh, just so easy to work with and such a nice guy. Some of the, the like the people that have, have reached out to me too, they're just, everyone is so nice and just, uh, it's been, it's been a, it's been a ride. It's been a trip for sure. Yeah, that's cool, yeah. Offspring is one of my, probably, well, maybe to certainly top three uh, bands. Uh, and uh, I, I went to a show and uh, you know, Noodles uh, flicked his uh, guitar pick at me, and I kind of yeah. hear somewhere in my mess or whatever. Awesome. But uh, you know, it's, it's autograph. I mean, it's just copied or whatever. It's not autograph. Yeah. autograph. But you know, it's kind of cool, right? You, you, yeah. you're a music fan, you go, "Wow, this is my moment!" Right? Yeah. <laughs> but Very cool. It's a pretty interesting cat, too. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Um. Go ahead. 
I was going to say, I was just more, <laughs> I just, okay. I love music. Yeah, I know. It's very cool. Uh, so, uh, like, you're also on the board of uh, Mississauga Music. And, you know, yeah. talk about how you got involved, like, what, you know, a music fan can, how they can be in, in, involved in it or a musician as well. Okay. So, well, uh, how did I get involved with it? It's kind of, uh, it was, I've always kind of worked with, uh, Demetrius and uh, his, Demetrius is the Demetrius and Chris Wolf. They they run. They they started Mississauga Music. I want to say five years ago. Uh, and I've always kind of worked with them. Um, I've helped them out a lot with uh, photography. Uh, I've done a lot of uh, for uh, for maybe May. I've done a, a bunch of uh, so any time any of the photos you look for at. Uh, Maybe me on their social media is probably shot by me, as well as uh, music videos. I think I've done uh, uh, five or six music videos with Demetrius, and uh, we just started a friendship from there, and it, it built. And then uh, at the beginning of this year, uh, they started. Uh, Miss Song Music became a nonprofit organization, uh, and that uh, would allow them to get grants from the city uh, and do a lot more than they could. Uh, just on their own, and they needed a board of directors. Uh, I, I didn't. I really, I didn't know how any of that worked. I had no idea. And they're like, we need a board of directors. And uh, uh, he asked a bunch of people that he had in mind, and uh, it's been great. Like, uh, it's it. It's also we haven't actually like seen each other in person like this year because of the pandemic. But we've had a lot of uh, uh, you know Zoom calls and. Uh, it's been it's been really fun because uh, all the people on the board I, I've I've known for a bunch of years as well and uh, we get a lot of stuff done and it's it's fun, really. Uh, and then uh, I think they uh, they also released a song called "Through My Eyes." I'm not sure if you're aware of that song, Miss Saga Music, and uh, I got to direct that video too. So that was a, a kind of at the same time when Demetrius said, "Hey, do you want to be on the board?" And then he said, "Hey, do you want to direct a music video?" And I was like, yes, and what for? And uh, and he told me the idea that they had. Uh, they had uh, written a song. Demetrius wrote a song with uh, Zaddy and Kendra. I can't remember what Kendra's last name is. French, I believe. Wow. She's a musician from uh, Mississauga. I, I'm pretty sure it's uh, Matt Zaddy, Kendra French, and Demetrius Naff. They all wrote this song, and they wanted a whole bunch of musicians to get together and uh, – sing the song and perform it and all the money that's being they're raising money for it it's all going to the mississauga food bank yeah it, and that's it, all yeah go ahead sorry it's a, I, I was just gonna say it's a great video and, and it's for a great cause as well so um yes. definitely yes. Uh, check it out on uh, youtube uh and i believe it's on mississauga music.com as well if i'm not mistaken yeah. yes Excellent, excellent. So I just uh, rounding out, like if um, if you have any questions, you're watching this, uh, feel free to post them in the uh, chat box as well. And I will ask uh, Michael X. Krusty, also known as Michael Emerald. So let's talk about uh, Krusty and what's some Michael X. Krusty is that kind of uh, That's, uh, uh, it's just a silly, <laughs> yeah, it's just a silly little thing. There is a, a period of my time. Uh, I had a, a, a puppy, I had a dog for a very long time. He, he's 17 years old and uh, he started getting uh, really anxious. It's, this is a really long story. <laughs> he started getting really anxious and separate uh, separation anxiety. So I couldn't really leave the house a lot because we were living in a basement apartment at the time. And anytime he barked, the people upstairs would complain. So I stayed home for like a whole winter. Like I just stayed home every day when I wasn't working. And uh, it was, it was around the time period when the, the Leafs were really bad. Like Jason Blake was on the team and it was just, they were losing every game. And uh, I just, I, uh, my friends would come over and they would be like, you're so, you're so angry all the time. You're so miserable. You're so crusty all the time. <laughs> and then it just stuck. That's literally how, what that it's, it's not very, it's not a very cool way to get a nickname but it happened and it's just it's just stuck ever since and uh i i've uh i've held on to it and i, I actually love it i don't know it's not really a simpsons ref reference either which a lot of people think it is oh really? yeah and what, what about the x what's the michael x crusty uh i i just uh i i, I didn't want to have a space <laughs> I, when i was looking at my logo i was like i don't want it to be michael crusty it's Michael X. Krusty. It, it 
you don't have to pronounce the X. It could be just Michael Krusty and Michael X Krusty. It's just uh, more of a, a design thing, <laughs> really. And it's uh, Krusty Media is what uh, I've been building up all year. I have a, a new website that a friend of mine from Mississauga put together. Her name is Bronte. Uh, she does websites and she put mine together, crustymedia.ca. I'm very excited about that. And we got shirts and we got all kinds of stickers and you can buy actually uh you can buy uh, prints on there as well oh really okay cool and so, t-shirts if you're just joining my name is mark Belish. i'm president of the canadian music expo i'm joined by michael x crusty also known as michael amarell who's a freelance photographer and videographer specializing in concerts music vid music videos and band promotion uh we talked uh, already about you know some of the concerts that you've done that you've covered very cool stuff um let's talk about design because uh you're you're involved in bands and, and designs and maybe you can talk about kind of like what what are the trends that you're seeing like over the last few years uh in terms of you know social media design and, and kind of where you see the future going for for bands and musicians <sighs> that's a hard one uh uh design uh i i i've been doing design a long time my my father owns a printing shop and uh we got a computer at a young age and I've been doing design for him ever since. Uh, even to this day, he'll be like, Hey, uh, I need a business card. Uh, can you, and I'll just put it together real quickly. But uh, I think design is, is very important, uh, especially like uh, the logo of the artist or the band. It really is a tell all about what, what you're going to get, what you're going to get. Like you're not going to want like a, a, a black metal logo where it looks like it's a forest or something, but it says Matt Zaddy. You're going to be like, uh, he plays folk music, not, you know, or, or soft rock or not black metal. I think that has a lot to do uh, with your image, which is probably the most important thing for any band starting out uh, before you even make any kind of social media dent before you decide on, on where you're going to be posting stuff it, you can you can have songs written, but you need to figure out what your image is going to be on all these social medias and what you're going to stand for, uh, because it, it's right now, especially right now, it's everything. It's people will judge a book by its cover, and most people have the uh, attention span of about five seconds. So you're going to want to wow them with whatever you have, so that you attract them. And then they'll look at everything. They'll listen to your music. They'll they'll want to buy your merch. If you're if you're if you just have a T-shirt that just says, you know, if I just had a T-shirt that just said Krusty on it, no one's gonna buy it. Uh, a Krusty T-shirt. Maybe maybe my mom or my dad, but that's about <laughs> it. You know, yeah. you, it, it's all about design. Like, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And if you can't draw or you can't do any kind of graphic design, find an artist. I'm sure you have a friend that draws. I'm sure you know a tattoo artist who can draw something for you and spend the money, take your time, think about it, spend the money, make sure it's perfect. And then once you have the entire plan of what you're going to, what you're going to look, what you want to accomplish, then start with the pieces and posting online. Otherwise it's not going to work. All right. Makes sense. Yeah. My advice to any band starting out. Yeah, that's good. Uh, you said, uh, I take it that your favorite band is Metallica because you got a, a tattoo or is that just... I, I have a couple of band tattoos, but yes, Metallica is my favorite ta uh, band for sure. By far. Seen them live several times? Uh, I have seen them uh, more than I can count. The first time I saw them was 96. I saw my cops Coliseum in Hamilton, which is an arena in uh, Ontario as well. Uh, I think I've seen them, let's do a quick plan, uh, maybe 12 times. Wow. I've seen other bands more. It's it's pretty crazy. I I've, I go to a lot of concerts, right? I've seen Green Day, I've seen Slipknot, I've seen Foo Fighters at least twenty times each. Wow! So I, I I've been to a lot of concerts. It's, it's really weird not going to concerts right now because yeah. like last in two thousand nineteen, I was in a venue watching a band live six days a week. Wow! Wow! Yeah. So uh, so you're in the two hundred to three hundred concerts a, a, a year on on. on pre-pandemic times really wow yeah wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah earplugs always earplugs kids yeah <laughs> that's a good, uh, good idea and i never wore earplugs i'm like what <laughs> yeah, no. uh well, cool. so and um so metallica uh i think i remember reading something about them that 
uh, they're the first band in uh, first band. What was it that has uh, released a band that released an album in like four consecutive decades or made yep. ten or something? You know, you know what I'm, trying to, what I'm yeah. talking about. They've also played in every continent, seven continents, which is wow. cool. They played in uh, the South Pole. They did a yeah. show there. Wow. It was pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, they've uh, they've been around for almost 40 years, uh, 38 years. And yeah. uh, they, one thing they did for the pandemic too was they uh, every Monday they would uh, they would uh, stream a live show on YouTube, and uh, they had uh, you could donate money as well. And they raised a whole bunch of money for. They have a foundation called All Within My Hands, and they donate. To different food banks around the world so anytime they play a show like they played a show in toronto uh they they take money from every ticket and i think they donate i think it's like twenty thousand dollars to the local food bank in every city they're in so they did it in toronto and then they also have they have a crew i have i know it's much more metallica they have a crew of 150 people and all the food that's left over that people don't eat they also donate to the food bank in the local city so it's where they they give a lot back to their communities that they're in and everything it's great they're a great band uh, did you do uh, did you ever get a chance to do the, f- the photography for them no uh, uh. so the, the 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 last time they were in toronto was 2017 they played at the uh, roger center where the blue jays play yeah and before that they were in toronto uh in 2009 at the acc so there there was a long period of time and and i wasn't i wasn't really con- i didn't feel confident enough in 2017 to take photos of bands so i didn't even apply for them so i haven't been able to take any photos of them i wish and that is a bucket list green day Metallica Slipknot is a bucket list concerts that I would love to shoot one day. Yeah, that'd be cool. Well, they, I think Metallica also played uh, a smaller venue, like the Danforth Music Hall or something before they, they were the Opera House. Opera House. Yeah, Opera House. That's right. Yeah. 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 yeah that was, uh, uh, you know, a last minute kind of thing, I think. And it was like, there were thousands of people that wanted to get in. And so uh, for yeah. those of you that don't know the Opera House, it might hold, what, 700? Yeah. 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 So it's a, it's a pretty cool venue as well. Yeah, the, and they uh, Metallica had um, the s and tour last year as well. Uh, or yeah. not, but the, the show uh, down in San Francisco. So the yeah. S for San Francisco Symphony and the M for Metallica. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that came out on video. Like, uh, that came out on movie too, which was... Uh, yeah, they, they released it on, uh, in theaters. Uh, and they did, uh, they did like three days in a row where you can go to theater and watch it. That's uh, right. I, I went and it was amazing. It was so good. I watched it in the theater. I wish I went to San Francisco to watch it, but and they just released it on uh, Blu-ray uh, maybe like a month ago in uh, vinyl and all that kind of stuff. And it sounds so good. The the orchestra, the symphony orchestra, is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Check that out if you're if you're even if you're not a Metallica fan. It's just cool seeing like the 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 symphony and uh, Metallica playing together. It's pretty cool. So yeah. we just got a, uh, one minute left here, Michael. Any other? Uh, plugs, any other promos that you want to talk about or, or how people can get hold of you? Uh, I would say uh, the best way to get hold of me is either uh, on my website. You can email me at crustymedia.ca. Or if you want to shoot me a message uh, on Instagram, you can find me at uh, at Krusty Media on uh, Instagram is uh, where the, the business account is. And uh, I will surely help you out. Uh, no band is too small or too big. I will uh, I will hear what you have to say and what you want, and I will try and work my very best to to make sure that you get what you want, and we're both happy with our products, and uh, and hopefully we can start something with every new band out there, get them going. Excellent. Well, thanks a lot, Michael. Hold, stay right there. Uh, just gonna uh, be uh, back in a second here, but uh, just for those of you watching. Um, I'll be back here on stage uh, in about 15 minutes or so. We'll be talking with Abathy about her career as a musician. Uh, There's a lot of uh, music going on right now in the different rooms and the different sessions. So feel free to navigate through uh, the networking area, your uh, networking button on the uh, left-hand side of your screen. Uh, You can connect with other people at this event, have up to five minute conversations with them, just talk about music or whatever you want. And then the expo area, you can check out. There are a number of uh, sponsors and exhibitors there that you want to visit their uh, booths and uh, uh, check the content out as well. And don't forget the reception area on the left-hand side also gives you uh, the full schedule of what happened, what's happening and with the links to the events. Uh, And note that, uh, you know, the um, sessions uh, boxes are only available 
five minutes before they go uh, live. So uh, just so you know that in case you're wondering. So so thanks again and uh, hold right there, Michael. And, um, and uh, for those of you watching, I'll be back in about 15 minutes. And uh, thanks for being here and uh, enjoy the show. Thanks.